Hey, welcome back to Way of the Ranch, and on today's very special episode, we're going to teach Creech some new dance moves. We're going to teach him how to shimmy and shake, and we are going to install not just a DIY shaker motor, but a real mamber jamber of a shaker motor this time. So stick around, you're not going to want to miss it. All right, so today's video has been graciously sponsored by Cleveland Software Designs. Thank you very much, Philip. And he has given me a heavy duty, real shaker motor to put into this virtual pinball cabinet. And normally you can't just run these things full blast, otherwise you're gonna shake your cabinet to death. So we have to have some way of tuning it down. So he also sent me a shaker motor board. So let's take a look at how these things work together. Okay, so the Cleveland Software Design shaker motor has a very large eccentric weight in here that's really going to want to toss that cabinet side to side and give some great shaking action. It comes mounted on a kind of like protective frame so that way if this decides to let go it's going to hit that and a very skookum 12 volt motor uh, DC motor that's going to drive this whole thing. Now as I was saying this cannot be just driven pure off 12 volt otherwise this is going to go too fast. And we want to be able to adjust it to exactly what we like. So there is this board from Cleveland Software as well. So basically how this one works is we've got our 12 volt positive and negative that get hooked up into our input side. We've got our signal, which the plus and the VCC can simply just be 12 volt positive. And then you have your negative. And if you're using the Cleveland Software Design uh, pin one system, then you can hook this right up to the main board. It's quite plug and play, quick connect. And then out here, we've got the output. So this is the positive and negative going to the motor itself. And right here, this little Phillips screwdriver, you get a little mini screwdriver. This is how you're going to manually adjust how much uh, voltage is going to your shaker motor. So if you turn this all the way counterclockwise, it will be zero volts. And if you go all the way clockwise, that'll be full 12 volts. And you can, of course, have anything in between. So if we put this somewhere near the front of the cab, we should be able to reach in through the coin door and with it actually in a game and shaking away, we can adjust it to exactly how we like. Now, this is not the only way we can adjust our shaker motor, so let me show you the other one. Now, if you've been following along with this series, you know that a lot of our parts in here is from L'Atelier d'Arnaud, including his Walter board, as well as the Moss 8 boards. So these boards combined are going to allow us to have pulse width modulation for any of our mechanical toys as well. So in the background and the back end of the configurator, we can actually go in and digitally adjust the power output for a shaker motor as well. So that is a completely separate second way we can do this and control a shaker motor. Now, I thought for the sake of this video, I'm going to install both so we can actually control it manually or show you in the configurator how to do it with pulse width modulation. So that way you guys can do whatever you need to on your V-pins. All right, now as to where to install this shaker motor and in what orientation, I would probably recommend that you put the shaft of the motor running from the front to the back. That way that offset weight will shove the cabinet left and right and give you lots of shake in action. And then um, I would probably stick to the front half of the cabinet for the shaker motor. Uh, you'll probably get more shaking if you have it right up the front of the cab. But I do have this nice empty Empty space in here so I think I'm going to mount it something like this. So I'm going to use a pencil and I'm going to lay out the holes for this and instead of using screws that might have the tendency to shake loose on this thing over time I'm going to drill holes right through and I'm going to use some inch and a half long number 1032s machine screws as well as some washers and some nylock nuts so this thing doesn't vibrate loose and come loose while I'm playing a game. Make sure you got those snug tight. You do not want this coming loose inside your cabinet. Trust me, been there already. All right, we're gonna mount another one of those Arnaud's La Nettoyisse boards, or the cleaner board, so that we don't have flyback voltage coming back and frying parts. And I think right next to it is a good spot for that CSD shaker motor board. That way we can reach in through the coin door with a mini screwdriver and make adjustments as needed. So let's mount these now.
All right, now on the 12 volt input connection, this is easy. You're just gonna grab your positive and negative 12 volts from your terminal blocks, put that in. And then on your signal in, the positive symbol and the VCC can both be coming from the positive 12 volt terminal block. And then the negative one we're gonna use as our signal for when we're actually turning on and off our shaker motor. So this is going to go to whatever is um, putting out that signal. So for us on this build, we are using the Walter board and the MOS 8. So this is gonna to go to port two on the MOS 8 board and we'll specify that in the configurator. Um, now this, wants only an on off signal it does not want a pulse width modulation signal so make sure that when we are in configurator this has to be 100 percent on or off uh, with zero uh, pulse width modulation happening on this signal in okay and then on the output uh, the black and red is going to go to the black and red on our shaker motor and you could just wire it up that way because this is an optocoupler so there is a separation you won't have any flyback voltages coming back however I did get one of those Le Netuise cleaner boards from Arno's for this build. So I'm just going to run this in line, make sure I got some nice clean voltage going to it, and it's got the diode built in to prevent any flyback voltage, which might possibly even fry this board. So uh, this one's real simple, just positive, negative, make sure you got the right polarity and input and output. Uh, and then put the output going to our shaker motor. Now don't forget if you're using this method, we don't want this cranked up to 100% when we start it. So there's a little screw pot here. You're gonna put that in there and go all the way counterclockwise until it stops. And that should be off when you turn the signal on. And then when you reach in through the coin door, you'll be able to slowly go clockwise, very, very slowly until you get the uh, level of shaking that you want for the cabinet. Okay, and don't forget on your port two to put in a little fuse in there, otherwise nothing's gonna work for you. Now, I tested with my adjustable power supply outside and at 100%, this thing's about five or six amps. So if you put a five amp fuse in there, it's more than likely gonna blow. So what you do is you do a safety factor of one and a half times. So if it was five, that had half, that's seven and a half, and they don't really make a seven and a half amp fuse, so we're gonna put an eight amp fuse in there and then close that up. Now, if you are doing the pulse width modulation using the Arno's MOS 8 and Walter driver boards, you have to take your port two negative wire and we're gonna put it to the negative side, to one side of the La Netuise cleaner board. And then you're gonna have the positive 12 volt coming from your power distribution block for 12 volt positive power. And then the other side of the Netuise cleaner board is the black and red wires going to your shaker motor. So it's a lot uh, simpler and cleaner of a setup if you're doing just pulse width modulation. And once again, we don't actually need this board if we're doing pulse width modulation. So pick one of the two. All right now, let's get the PC started and open up our dude's cab configurator so I can show you what's next. All right, so open up dude's cab configurator. And we're gonna go to connect. And we're gonna go down to output cards. Okay, now you can see we've got our gear motor set up from a previous video, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll put up the link so you can go check out that video. So we've got lots of other ports available here, so we're gonna add a second port, port number two, and we are gonna call this one shaker, so we know what it's for, and we're gonna change the output preset to motor. And this is a noisy toy, so we're gonna click on night mode affected so that when we hit the night mode button, it'll go away. Now, if you are installing the Cleveland Software Designs shaker motor board, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the power is at 100% and max value is at 100%. And then you are going to go up to here and go send config and save to memory. And then you are ready to start. Now, when you go to test this and to make the final adjustment, you're going to click on on and it shouldn't be doing anything because we had that pot turned all the way counterclockwise. So with this test being on, you can reach in through the coin door with a little mini screwdriver and slowly go clockwise with that screw adjustment until you get to the shaking that you want. And remember, we are looking for kind of like a side to side kind of shake, not an absolute vibration of the entire cabinet. So just adjust it to what you want. And then when you have it uh, exactly how you like it, then uh, you're done. Now, if you are doing the digital pulse width modulation method, then we do not want to have this at 100%. And I would recommend starting really, really low. So I have already tested this. I like about nine or 10%. So make sure those are at 10%. And then we can press send config and save to memory. OK, 
Okay, now important to note that when you set that you want the pulse width modulation to be 10% down here, then when you do the test up here, don't think that from zero to 100% up here at 100% is not 10%. This is literally 100% when you scale it over. So don't be really quick with this slider when you drag it over for your initial test. Uh, like I said, 10% is about max for me and that starts to vibrate too much. So all you do is you left click and drag on this to see what it would actually feel like. And in the beginning, you're gonna hear some buzzing. That's literally the shaker motor getting voltage, but not enough to get that weight to spin up over to the top. And so eventually it starts to spin. So like I said, that's 10%. And when I'm holding the end of the cabinet, I, I get a nice kind of like back and forth kind of shake, kind of almost like I'm nudging the cabinet back and forth, but it is not vibrating everything on the cabinet to death. So, like I said, I stick with 10% and I would not go any higher than that, but do whatever feels good for you. Okay, we're gonna shut that off. Okay, and then we're done here. Uh, if the send config is blinking, you just have to press send config and save to memory, uh, and then you can close this out. Okay, now remember we're on the port two, because the next step is we have to go do the DOF config tool on uh, VP Universe. So close this out. Okay, open up Google, VPU config. We're gonna go to this one, the home version three. And then go ahead and log yourself in. Okay, once you're logged in, go over to cabinets, go to manage. Make sure that you are on the proper cabinet that you're doing. So this is my big budget one, selected with the green check mark. I'll go over to here. And if you haven't had anything inputted in yet, you're gonna to have to add a device. We already did this for our gear motor last video. So there's the dude's cab already there. So now we go down to port assignments. And up here, we want dude's cab. If it's not selecting dude's cab, you can click on it and select it from the list. So we want dude's cab. And then port one was our gear motor, and we put the wire right next to it in port two for our shaker. So click on that, and then scroll down until you see the shaker motor. Perfect, okay, that's all we gotta do. Now at this point, we're gonna update it. And then we need to generate a new config. Okay, that's done. Go to show where that is. We can just open this up here, and we're gonna left click everything in here right click copy and then we need to go to our C drive direct output and then right here we're gonna right click and paste and it says it's gonna replace these so we'll go ahead and replace them and then that part's done okay now we can close this log ourselves out of this and then the next thing we got to do is we actually got to tell visual pinball uh, what we're doing here. So we're going to open up our C drive, V pinball, visual pinball, scroll down to your default visual pinball, and then we're going to go to preferences, and then we need to go to keys, nudge, and doff. Okay, now over here where it says shaker, it's probably going to be sound effects, or maybe it'll be both. Uh, so you get to pick what you want here. Uh, sound effects is just the audio kind of replicating it. DOF is only going to be the real shaker motor that we put in, and both would be uh, both of those. Now, I'm kind of a firm believer, if you've put a real gear motor or you put a real shaker motor, things like that, you should just put it on DOF. Uh, I don't really like hearing the audio version of it as well as a real shaker or a real gear motor. So click DOF, and then we're going to say OK. And I kind of just get into the habit if it'll let me save and it doesn't, so I just have to close this out. Okay, now at this point, we need to check this out and see if it's working. So we're gonna open up our front end and due to uh, audio issues, um, I'm going to have to find something that we can play here that doesn't have any audio. Okay, so if you are looking for a good table to check for a shaker motor, uh, Twister is a really good one because as soon as you plunge the ball, it will have a little bit of shaking. As soon as you hit any of the slingshots, it'll start shaking. Any of the center targets, it'll start shaking. So this is a really good one to test. Okay, here we go. Put some money in, press start, and oh, there we go. A little shaking already, perfect. Okay, just a little bit of shaking. Nope, a little more there. Just a touch of shaking. 
And you know what, it might be even just a little bit too much. I might turn it down to maybe seven or six. We'll just have to kind of play with the game and see how it feels. But we got a fully functional shaker motor working. Awesome, now it's just the time to tune it a little bit how you like it. Perfect. Uh, another thing I'm noticing that the shaking of the cabinet isn't really affecting the ball, so that's good. I don't really want the, the ball to think I'm slapping on the cabinet and having it move it all around. Perfect. All right, so twister, great table to tune your shaker motor strength. Awesome. So I did show you the two different methods to be able to control your shaker motor, and I am going to leave it being controlled with pulse width modulation through Arno's boards. So this leaves the shaker board kind of being left alone and not being used. However, keep in mind, this is not just a shaker motor board. This is actually a motor controller board. So any motor could be pulse width modulated with that little screw. So. Uh, I do want to put a blower fan in and if it's too loud, I've already got this board set up in the cabinet. So like I showed you in the video, I've wired this up, put it to a 12 volt power supply here. And if I turn this little potentiometer screw clockwise, ooh, look at that. And we can crank this bad boy all the way up or we can go all the way down. So we can use this board and we're probably gonna put it in the video for this blower fan. All right, I just wanna end this video with one little warning. These professional pinball shaker motors are no joke. You have to tune these things down, otherwise you're gonna vibrate the crap out of your electronics and, and be destroying components. So make sure you tune them down. And to give you an idea, I just showed you how to do pulse width modulation and I set it to like 10%. I've actually gone back after that and set it to about 6%. Uh, that way it is just literally side to side kind of jostle motion and there's zero vibrations going on. That's kind of what I'm shooting for so that I can have all these expensive components last for the long term. Uh, special thank you to Philip from Cleveland Software Designs for the sponsoring of this video. Uh, these are some great parts and if you would like to purchase these parts for yourself, I will put a direct link down in the video description for you guys to go get them from Philip. Uh, what's next? I need more toys. Uh, maybe we'll do a knocker in. I haven't done a knocker yet in a cabinet, so uh, stay tuned for that. And if you haven't already, why don't you join us on Instagram so that way you can see what's going on in this amazing shop in between videos. Till next time, take it easy.